Today I'm going to be talking to Eloisa Lamance. She is a sociologist and she is currently doing a PhD as part of a research group who are looking into things that you can do with wind turbine blades at the end of their lifetime to bring them into a circular economy. Taking these blades and remanufacturing it, this is not waste, but this is a valuable material that's economically viable, that's environmentally friendly. I'm Eloisa, I'm Brazilian and I'm living in Ireland. I'm also part of the Rewind project. That's a project that involves around 30 people working on reuse options for the, the commission wind turbine blades. What we are doing is trying to find the options that could be used when the, the blades are decommissioned. We have engineers, we have architects, we have designers, engineers from all sorts of different areas. I, I always like to work with environment and also the way that society relates to technology and uh, science. That's really interesting uh, combination, bringing together two, um, two different fields that people, people aren't always thinking about how, um, yeah, how, how science works in the, with people, actually. Sometimes people ask, but if you're a sociologist, why are you working with wind turbine blades? Mm -hmm. And I it's very related. The wind turbine blades, especially in the whole wind industry, they have impacts in, in people's life uh, in the landscape. So uh, I think it's important to consider the communities that are living around the, the wind farms. And it's important to understand how society uh, perceives wind energy and all the, um, the, the, the components of it. Most of my research is about how the, the paradigm is shifting from a linear to a circular economy mm. and uh, how these could uh, benefit people because they could reuse these materials and make some profit out of that and involve the communities on that. Yeah, okay. So I wanted to just start out talking about the, what's the problem that we're trying to solve so that's it. If you think about all these blades lying down on the ground, it's really a problem. But if you think about these, uh, these amount of material as something that can be reused and can be directed to building houses or something like that, that's fantastic then because it's a material that's going to be discarded from the wind farms. And then if you have someone that's interested in getting these materials and producing something else, mm. it's a good uh, source of materials to be used, I think how to have um, an economy that doesn't really uh, harm the environment. Nowadays, for the number of blades, the blades are being scarred in, in these ways, either used in the cement kiln mm -hmm. or uh, being shred and sent to the landfill. What's the new ideas? <laughs> yeah, so we have our main idea is a pedestrian bridge. Okay. So it could be used um, as a pedestrian bridge with uh, just like a reduced amount of concrete compared to a normal bridge. Are there other, other products? Because I imagine that the number of pedestrian bridges that the world needs is probably not enough to use up all of the wind turbine blades that yeah. are going to need to be repurposed. Well, I have to say that we are very lucky in Ireland because the government is thinking, uh, is planning on building a lot of greenways and because Ireland has small rivers and also many farms, yeah. uh, we are going to, to, to have these blades uh, connecting the greenways when you have a river or when you have a cattle passage or something oh, like okay. that. Okay, so, so you have actually got a large, a large need for, <laughs> for bridges. Another idea that we have is to cut these blades in, in pieces that could be sold to be assembled by someone that works with DIY, building some home furniture. Okay, so in the same way that you just buy in pieces of, of wood or MDF from the hardware store, yeah. you could just buy planks of um, fiberglass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know these uh, stores that you can just go and get what you want and build a shelf or something like that. So you would yeah. find the, the planks of from the, the wind turbine blades in there. 
Okay. And you need to do a lot of processing. I mean, I know I've worked in um, wind turbine blade factories and I know the fiberglass, it can be pretty itchy and um, you can get splinters from it. So I guess you can't just slice it up and send it off. Um, also, some of it's quite curvy uh what what kind of processing would need to be done to it we have uh, a group of uh, engineers working in georgia tech in us and they are doing the tests for cutting and uh, also assembling uh, the the blades there is some coating or some way of polishing these to avoid mm. the fiberglass to to be harmful to someone that's going mm. to use it yeah but i guess it could be um good for building like sheds and and all sorts of things like that as well um because it's mm -hmm. it's weather resistant and yeah very very durable which is one of the, the reasons why you have this problem that we need to <laughs> need to find yeah right to repurpose it. yeah yeah. So I think the important thing is to think about many ideas, Rosie, because then you don't have just one niche of the market. Where are you at in the, the process with this? When, when will we see um, pedestrian bridges made out of wind turbine blades? When will we be able to come and uh, place an order for uh, fiberglass pieces to, to build a backyard shed out of how, how far away is that? Yeah. In Georgia Tech, they are now uh, doing the tests on the blades for like cutting and um, I think maybe for half, for the middle of 2021, these tests are going to be completely done. So I expect that for around June, July 2021, we are going to have these ideas or at least one of the ideas kind of ready to go in the market. Just connecting the stakeholders, connecting the wind industry, the, the wind farm owners, the blade designers, connecting the government, connecting the communities, and then see if maybe the communities are interested on in a social enterprise taking these blades and remanufacturing it with support from the wind and industry and the government. You know, it's this whole new way of thinking about the circular economy that it's... Uh not just the end of its life and you throw it out, but it's the, you know, the start of a new life for it. This is not waste, but this is a valuable material that deserves to be kept in the production chain because it would be really um, not wise not reusing these materials. The idea of using it for a, as a building material, we must go through a lot of that every year as a society. So it seems like there's... <laughs> There's a lot of volume that yes. could be used in that way. In Brazil, it's much more clear that you have the favelas where people build their house with cardboard and mm. plastic bottles and whatever resource that they have. And uh, I think if you give people that live in favelas, if you give them one wind turbine blaze, they are going to make a full house out of that because they they really need something. Yeah. And in a material like that, they would make a magic process considering that they already build houses using cardboard. So I think it's also thinking about other, other conditions uh, like that, people that live in, in really poor conditions and could be using materials like that if maybe there was an, an, a support from the government. Yes. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I hadn't thought of that. I've, I've never lived in a, a country that has those kind of living conditions. So for me, that, yeah, that's not something I had even thought of, but there must be a, a huge scope to um, improve, massively improve those types of living conditions. And it's not just Brazil, there's plenty of other countries where people have yes. housing, housing issues the same this transition from a linear paradigm to a circular paradigm in economy is happening in Ireland and how the stakeholders involved in this particular case of the decommissioning of the blades and the reuse of the blades for a community that could reuse these blades and make profit that could be used for the community. Of course, generating jobs out of that would be a very good income for the government as well. We want to find something that's that's circular, that's circular really, that's uh, economically viable, that's environmentally friendly, and that's sociable, acceptable. By finding a good way of reusing the blades, you can also support and mitigate the negative impacts of wind energy. Yeah, I think it's really good, holistic thing, and it's not, uh, you know, I work in the wind industry with 
engineers, 90% of my colleagues are engineers and uh, I can really see the benefit for the multidisciplinary team that you've, you've got. You're bringing in yeah. massively different ideas. It's, uh, I, I just think that's how every, every industry in the world needs to move this way to get more diverse thinking yeah. and come up with better solutions. I'm definitely going to be checking back in with you in uh, a year's time to see, see how it's progressed. Yeah, well, uh, good luck with the rest of the quarantine and I'll talk to you again another time. Thank you. It's okay. awesome. Bye, Rosie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.